we're going to be looking at some Old Testament uh, stories, uh, and we're going to look at something here in just a moment. But just so that we are, are aware that these Old Testament was written for our example, and we can read stories in the Bible and maybe not take the right thing away from it. Like uh, when the, the Adam and Eve's children were asking, why are they not in the garden anymore? You know, have you ever, why, you know, Adam and Eve's children saying, why are we not in the garden? They were upset. Uh, there wasn't anything to eat. Uh, on the trees, and, and Adam had to tell him this because your wife ate us out of house and home. You're, my wife ate us out of house and home. Or like Boaz, we'll learn Boaz, uh, and he married Ruth, and the man that he was before he married Ruth, he was ruthless. <laughs> and uh, it's true. You can take that, both of these things from the Old Testament, or the, the, this little boy that had heard about the story of Adam and Eve in church, and, and how when God t- created man, he created man, and then he created the woman out of the, out of the man's uh, side, and later on that week, he was laying on the ground, and his mom comes in and, and says, what's wrong? He goes, oh, my side hurts, mom. Mom, I think I, I got a side ache. I think I'm getting a wife. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Those aren't the things you necessarily take, take away from, from Scripture, but we're going we're gonna to jump in this morning. So we've been in this series called I Am, and we're talking about the names of God. What a song this morning, lifting up the name, uh, magnifying the name of God. And I just pray that we would, we would see things clearer uh, and see who, who he is this morning. Let's pray before we get into the word. Father, thank you this morning uh, that you're the teacher and I'm just asking you that you would teach today as you taught me, that I would communicate clearly the, uh, just, j- just what you've spoke to my heart. And I'm asking uh, just for a revelation, that which we couldn't articulate, but you would impart. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I, wanna, um, <clears throat> I, wanna, I want us to know why we're doing this. Felt like it was uh, a few weeks back, maybe a couple months back. Uh, talking about the names of God, and it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of head nodding uh, to different different things. And how many of you know it's really easy for time to pass and us sort of forget certain things or maybe not have been taught, right? Um, everybody doesn't know the Bible, the old school Bible stories. There's a whole generation that's going up, growing up, and they have no idea about Noah's Noah's Ark they might have, but if you talk about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you talk about um, even Jonah in the whale, like they don't don't know. They don't know the story or why other than there was a big fish and a guy. Like they don't know any story. And so um, we're we're talking about this because we need to see who God is. And so this series called I Am, and we, we started it out by understanding this, that all of who God is, we can look at Jesus and we can see. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 4, just a little bit of review this morning. 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 6, that we preach Christ uh, to verse 6 now because he gave us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Like, in other words, we see who God is in the face of Jesus. Jesus shows us who God is. So God being spirit, we see God, we see God sent a man so that man could see and, and experience him at a, at a level that it was und- like right there. All right. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 26, Jesus himself says that I have revealed to, your, to the people, I have revealed your name. I've made, I've made it manifest. Look, I've made known to them and will continue to make known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself might be in them. He said, I, I'm, I have made known to them who you are. I've showed you. So when we talk about I am, we started on this, this series, we talked about Jesus, who Jesus God. He, 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 if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We, we, we started there. And, and we, it's important that we understand that Jesus is who God is. And the, and the names of, of Jesus or the names of God is who Jesus is. And that we should not be ashamed of the gospel. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. That all of the names of God is who Jesus is. Okay? I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. So it's important that we know who God is because that's who Jesus is. And Jesus demonstrated who God is. That They're they're, they're a foreshadowing with the children of Israel. And then you see the fulfillment in Christ. In Luke chapter 4, verse 17 through 19, you see that Jesus opens the book of Isaiah. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The good news. The good news. And then you look below there, when he preaches, what happens? 
And when he preaches, what's done? When there's oppression, you'll find that these names that we're going through over these next few weeks, that oppression, if you have a name where people were oppressed, he, Jesus used multiple different names of God in different situations. And it's important that we re- recognize that, that Jesus said, I'm here to show you the good news and to show you who God is now to his people because of making a covenant through my blood. Okay, so now let's, let's pick up here. I want you to throw up this slide here. First, or not, not the slide yet. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. I want you to see this. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. And so we know that, the, and maybe you don't know this, but the Bible tells us that the Old Testament is written for our example. Uh, there's, there's, it, it teaches us how to think, actually. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. However, sin has been paid for through Jesus, so now he doesn't need a sacrifice over and over again. But God is the same God. Okay? And so when we see how reverence and honor and goodness and kindness and patience and mercy, we see all of these things, he's still that God. Except for his wrath has been satisfied by his son Jesus paying the price. So look at this. It says, these things happened to them as examples. Talking about the children of Israel here. Okay? And were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So two words. Don't, go, don't leave the screen yet. Two words. There are examples, but they're not just examples. What else are they? Okay. So examples are patterns, right? Examples and warnings. Warnings are important. How many of you know, uh, you ever see those little stickers that says warning or warnings? It just helps you and I not get ourselves into a bunch of trouble, right? Like they put those things in in important places uh, because they don't want you to make a, a silly, even sometimes you could almost say stupid mistake. If you're putting together a deer stand, which is recently uh, quite a bit, um, my Caleb put them together, four of them just this, this year, and there's all kinds of warning labels like, um, don't fall out of the tree, well, you'll be high, you could fall, I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, warning, height, death could occur if you fall out, yeah, okay, I appreciate that, but this is how, how simple sometimes, and simplistic and almost can be silly a warning can be, but if you don't know, so it's written, right? And so there are things about God that he writes so that we would know. I want you to see this word warning right here in the Strong's, in the Greek. So I had him put it on a slide. And this is that word where it's written down for, as warnings for us. And as warnings for us, all of that is, a, is kind of one word in the Greek. Go ahead and put that next slide up. And it te- this is the definition of that. In the Greek. So I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Nathesia. Okay. Uh, it, 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 there's the number. You can look it up in the Strong. Strong's 3559. Five, uh, it, it's a warning through teaching. This is how, this is how God's giving us warnings. It's a warning through teaching. This is why we can look at these Old Testament stories and take so much from them. Because they're, they're a teaching. They're not just a story. Okay? And so God wrote these things, but here's what it does. It imp- this is, again, straight from the Strong's. It improves a person's reasoning so they can reach God's solution. So these, the, the, we can see how God, what, how, what God's solution is. Like when you look at Joseph when he was betrayed by his brothers. What was God's solution? To take him and put him in this place. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Well, you see the character of God. You, look, you can look through all these, but I love this, by going through his th- thought process. So we can see the way that God thinks. These are important things, but I love this. Improves a person's reasoning so they can reach God's solution. It's so important that you and I know the names of God because when you face something, maybe it is where you come into a place where there's lack or you have no peace or, or you, you're fighting a battle or or condemnation, or like, what does God say? We see God revealed in name, and this name, it teaches us what? How to think so we can reach a God's solution. When you, the Bible tells us this, that in this world you're going to have many battles, right? Be, be of, but be of good cheer, I've overcome. Be of good cheer, I've overcome. So he wants you and I to overcome, and we overcome with him. So it teaches us, these stories teach us how to get to a God's solution. A God solution. Do you, anybody need a God solution? I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been into a place because of even my own decisions, and I just need a God solution now. 
because I've walked so far. This is what's so cool about the children of Israel. They're a lot like us, where we do everything, we do a lot of things on our own for a while, and then all of a sudden we're like, okay, God, I need you, right? But there's a God solution that comes out of this. So let's look here. Um, for the last couple of weeks, we talked about Jesus who? Jesus God. Jehovah Jireh, we saw this, that God will provide, and what I see is not it. That, that's a good place to start. What you see is not it. Like there was a, I see Isaac, I don't, I don't see, but when he looked up, he saw something that he didn't see before, right? So what you see is not it. Last week we talked about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And we, we looked at how the body and the blood, it wasn't just the blood, it was the body and the blood, right? Or you could say the blood and the body. In other words, both are, you'll see that there's mention, both. Why? Because the body, by his stripes, you were healed. The pole was about, you're, you're my healing, and we looked at this, the passage where it was first mentioned, how the, the children of Israel get, were getting bit by a snake. And so God told Abraham, or not Abraham, but rather Moses, to get a pole, okay, and take a snake and hang it on the pole. Now, was Jesus a snake? No, but they were being bit by snakes. And the price was paid for on the pole. So let me ask you this. What are you being bit by? What is it that is bringing death or sickness or disease into your camp? Well, let's guess what? If it would have been uh, high blood pressure, okay, God would have said, make some high blood. I don't even know what that would look like, right? And hang it on the pole. If it's arthritis, go ahead and get you a crippled hand and grip it to that pole and hang it on the pole. Whatever it is, here's what he's saying. He made the snake and said, hang it on the pole because on a pole, I'm going to pay for all of it because I am the Lord who heals you. And Galatians chapter 3 says that the blessings of Abraham came upon us because of Jesus hanging on a cross. So it's important for us to know that what, what ails you, what's bringing sickness to your house, you can hang it on the pole. And the Bible says that anyone now who would look upon the pole, they would be made well. So where do we fix our eyes in sickness? The pole. What's the pole? The tree, the cross. Okay? Now this morning we're talking about Jehovah Nisi, so get ready. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 17. We're going to read uh, 8 through 16. Exodus 17, 8 through 16. Second book of the Bible. I love how God, right away, you'll find that when he reveals himself, he, he doesn't wait forever to, to, to re reveal himself to, as who he is to his people. Right away. Every time they came into a, a place of adversity, he had a solution. God has a solution. Isn't that cool? A God solution. We just saw that. These are written for a God solution. All right, so here we go. Picking up in verse 8. Now, <clears throat> this is the story of, uh, well, let's read it. All right. 8 through 16. After this, this is after the, the, there was water, uh, where, when Moses hit the rock and water came out of it. After this, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, come, uh, or excuse me, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the hilltop with the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did as Moses had instructed him and fought against the Amalekites, while Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So we see Joshua on the plains going out to fight, and we see Moses going up to the top of the hill to hold up a rod. As long as Moses held up his hands, Israel, Israel prevailed. But when he lowered them, Amalek prevailed. When Moses' hands grew heavy, he took, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on each side, so that his hands remained, remained steady until the sun went down. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as a reminder and recite it to Joshua, because I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner, or Jehovah Nisi. Indeed, he said, A hand was lifted up toward the throne of the Lord, and the Lord will war against Amalek from generation 
to generation. So we see this picture of God being a banner or God fighting for the children of Israel. And this is why the, Moses made an altar and made a, made a, a place. And he said, write this down because Joshua even needs to hear it. It wasn't his sword that won the battle. It was the Lord who was fighting for us. There was from heaven for you and me or for, for down, down on, on the ground. What was happening, there was a win because of Christ or because of the Lord. All right, and you're in my life. The banner that we fly under, the banner that we all fly, the, the, it's like the American flag. It's Christ. There's something about banners. Banners. The, the, a banner is not just a flag. It's something that's lifted up high and seen. Okay, we're gonna get to that here in a moment. But I want to hit real quick, uh, maybe a little uh, little funsy fact. How many of you ever like a little funsy facts? Right, Amalek. You know what about Amalek? I, I was I was doing some study this week. I thought it was interesting. We had went to uh, <clears throat> Champions for Christ Youth Camp this year, and we went to Sight and Sound Theater and saw the story Esther. Okay, and and there's this man by the name of Haman, okay, who was trying to bring uh, the demise of all the Jewish people. Did you know he was of the of the same tribe as the here they're fighting, the Amalekites. So that, that was his heritage. And did you know that God said, I'm going to fight against them? And when God brought Saul to be a king, he said, go and destroy all of them. And you know what Saul did? He destroyed all of them except for the king and the queen. And did you know who Haman was? He was a descendant of King Agag. So it matters, listen, when God's dealing with you to deal with something that the, uh, that the devil is bringing into your life to bring destruction, it matters how you deal with it. So if, 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 if in your life there's something Amalek, okay, and Amalek, the Amalekites had, like, they vowed it, to destroy the Israelites. That was their goal. Even all the way you see into Esther, we're going we're gonna to destroy you, wipe you off, and the king Agag even means high. And then there's this prophecy in Numbers 25 that says the king of Israel, the king when they installed Saul, he will not just be high, he will be higher than high. It's interesting how you got the devil, he's saying, I'm high, I'm the high one. And the Lord's like, I'm higher than you're high, all right? It's so cool when you look at these, these stories. But it matters when, when something's trying to bring destruction to you. Saul didn't think it was that big of a deal. He took care of most of it. It's kind of like this. Maybe, maybe you're struggling with pornography. And you're in a battle, and maybe your wife... Uh, maybe you got in an argument and she caught you and now everything went to snap and, 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 and you're like, okay, I'm going to get it right, I'm going to get it right, except, except you take care of all of it, except you still, don't, you, you still have a private password or you still have a way to access you still There's not all accountability. You took care of 99% of it, but you still got this back door. You're not going to do it, but you never know if you're going to need it when. Don't jack around did you know it was the an amalekite that finished off saul interesting so the lord wants to fight with you to destroy the works of the enemy but you're going to have to fight with him with the lord you're going to have to do according to what he says do let me tell you when you find when, when the lord brings a direction follow it all the way through all right and that was for somebody this morning. So you need some accountability. You need to take off that privacy side screen so in case you get caught, you, you have nothing to hide. If you have, let me just tell you this. If you have to hide it, it's wrong. It's that simple. If you have to hide it, it's wrong. It's the most simple statement that we talk our kids all the time. If you have to hide it, it's wrong, period. If you have to quick get off, it's wrong. I don't care if you're on Facebook while you're at work. If you have to hide it and say, here comes the boss. Oh, it's wrong. It's wrong. Okay, so, all right, <laughs> let's keep going here. So the Lord is our banner. The Lord is our banner. Let's, let's define banner. It's, it's a flag, it's a, it, but it, what, it's, it's more than that. It's, the Nisi is it's a pole. It's as much a flag as it is a pole. It's something that is elevated and, and signifies not just who you fight under, but who, when they come at you, they see the flag. So this is, as you would go into battle, it would be very clear who you're fighting. Be, not just who you're fighting for and with, but who you're fighting against. 
that the, the enemy should know that it's uh, where, he's, where he talks about, well, Peter I know and Paul I know, but who are you? The enemy should know that when he comes at you and me, he's coming not just against Nate. He's coming against the Lord of hosts. That's what he should know that. That in my life, that the, the Lord is my banner and that I would lift him high and hold him on that pole and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Let us lift it high. Because sometimes we just let his name come down here and we let the high name be higher than the higher name. So magnify the Lord with me. Let's lift it up. The Nisi is not just a flag. It's a flag that's hung high on a pole. And it tells us not just who you're fighting for, but it tells those who are going to fight you who they're going to fight against. It also tells you what strength and resources uh, you can draw from. Think about that. So like I, I was watching, uh, as I was doing this, I was going to play a video and I decided against it. felt like I could just tell the story. Uh, the A-10 Warthog, there was some uh, footage that was once classified. It had been released. Uh, we don't even know why it's classified, but it's the guys on the ground and the A-10 Warthogs, which we used to have here at, uh, at the base. Okay, uh, They call them the grunts in the sky uh, in this video because they, fl- they flew so close with the ground men. So what would happen is when they were, especially over uh, in Iraq and, and when the ground was, when they were making advancements or they got caught in trouble, these planes, they could call in, in the coordinates and they would many times, they, and they had footage of this, the A-10 Warthog would come within 50 or 60 yards and lay down fire 50 yards from their guys on the ground with these coordinates and, and take it out. You know what they, when they saw that flag in the sky, how many of you ever watched these old World War II and you see, all of a sudden you see the round circle, uh-oh, right? If you're on Pearl Harbor and you look out the window and you see round circle, red round circle, that means not good. That, not American. It's not. It's, it's Japanese. Like you would think, I, that can, that's not good. If you were in, if you were in the World War II, you, you would really want to see a British... A British flag. You'd want to see an American flag. Why? Because that's a flag that tells you there's strength. There's resources. Maybe you're low on ammo and all of a sudden you see a big bomber coming over. And you're like, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. Except now you see it's an American flag and something gets dropped out. That parachute is supplies. It's not people coming to get you. So flags matter. Flags matter. It's what, how, how you, what you shoot at or don't shoot at. Flags matter. Banners matter. And I, did, I thought it was so cool thinking about this A-10 warthogs and how the Lord is a banner over us. And when they're on the ground and they're, you know, getting pressed back, all it takes is them calling out. All it takes is them calling up, hey, hey, hey. And you could hear on the, on the transponders or the, the communications, guys stressed out, guys in trouble, taken on fire. And, and there's interviews with pilots and how they, they, they were not just viewed as these stuck-up pilots. Because they had a mentality that these are my guys on the ground. And we got to recognize and remember, that's how God thinks. These are my guys on the ground. Like, would you send them a a, a distress signal? Like, when you are filled with anxiety, when we're filled with care, that's a sign that we need to make a phone call. You know, we need to call up and he'll be there in 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 a moment of trouble. The Bible tells us this. So Jehovah, Nisi, the Lord is my banner. But it also tells us who we're rallying around. Who are you rallying around and fighting for? And here's the deal. We're sitting here in, in pews or in chairs, and yet it's so many times we're, we're, connect, we're close, but we're not connected the way that we need to be. We're, we're, we're fighting as Kyle. We're fighting, we're fighting over here. We're fighting over here. We're fighting as Justin. We're fighting over here as, as Brad. We're fighting, we're fighting as individuals, and God never said it that way. He never designed it that way. It's who are, we rallying, uh, who are we rallying around and who are we fighting for? So, like, it's, these are my brothers. Like, I, I look over here and I got Joe uh, running front line. He runs the men's ministry here, leads it, and, and he talks about being a front line guy. But he also is a, a contractor for the military in ways. Uh, and so he understands what it means to have a brother down or to have a, to, the brotherhood of, of I'm, I, we're, we're playing for keeps with each other. Against an enemy. And so I just want you to remember that you're playing for keeps with your brothers against an enemy. 
And this is, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But what, who are you rallying around and what are you fighting for? You're, you're fighting for keeps. So we got to hold the banner high, right? we got to hold that banner high, which is the name of Jesus. When you come and somebody's in a battle, what do you do? You hold the banner high. You use the name above every name. You use the higher name. The name above the one that is trying to bring destruction to, to your people. Okay? All right. And remember, what, what did the Lord say at the end of verse um, uh, 16? He said, indeed, he said, um, the Lord will war against Amalek from generation to generation. Uh, well, we're not going to take time to go off into that trail. All right. So let's hang with me. All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, 45. The David said this to Goliath. How many of you have any Goliaths that you've been fighting lately? It seems to be a lot bigger than, than, than you. Um, David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This is so important for us to get right here, because as we talk about Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who is our banner, the Lord who's fighting, he's flying and fi singing over us, he's our victory, he's where our victory comes from, that he, our victory comes from him, and he is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of, this is what, the Lord of hosts. This is, appears either as Yahweh host, Saba, or Elohim Saba, which means the Lord or the the. God who commands armies. So he says, I'm coming to you. So this is what is so interesting. The battle that was on the ground, where Moses had his hands held, the battle that was on the ground wasn't just between people. Hosts got involved. Okay? And I, I want you to understand that it, the Bible tells us, let's go ahead and go here, Ephesians chapter 6, 12 through 20, hosts are involved. The enemy would love to bring destruction. Satan's come to steal, kill, and destroy. We remember this, that when, when Satan fell, he took a third of his angels with him. And so they're like his little minions, or they're demons, okay, that are trying to bring adversity to your and my life. Now, sometimes it's our decisions, okay? Sometimes it's our decisions, but anything that has the, the, his fingerprints on it, you're going to find in some way whether it was the temptation because you were discontented to make that decision or whatever it might be, you're going to find that he is behind it. Okay? So look at this because maybe you've read this passage of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 talking about putting on the whole armor of God. But let's pick up here. It says for our, verses 12, Ephesians 6, 12, it says that our struggle or our war is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, it says, put on the armor of God. Okay? So I, I want to just hit on there, and then maybe you've heard about putting on the armor of God and the shield of faith and all these things. That's good. That's awesome. We need to do that. You know why you need to put on the armor? Because you're in the army. But so many times we think we're a Navy SEAL or something, uh, and not even a Navy SEAL, a Rambo. Put on the armor of God and let's Rambo this, baby. You better have some explosive uh, uh, arrowheads and all kinds of other stuff and tie a ribbon around your, you know. I, it, this is how we face our, our problems. Well, uh, just all solo alone, I'm just going to suit up in the armor of God. Well, you suit up in the armor of God because you're in the army of God. So it's important for us to recognize that there is an army of God who, and the Lord is the commander, he commands hosts, but he also commands you and me. Would you agree with that? So we are, we are a part of the army. We got ones in the air, they're called angels, and we got ones on the ground. They're called brothers and sisters in Christ. So it matters that you put on your armor, but it also matters that you remember that you're in an army. Because if one can put a thousand to flight, how many can two? The Bible talks about a prayer of agreement. It talks about coming into agreement. If two agree on earth is touching anything, it'll be done for them. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Why would you need power available if you're praying just by yourself? He's talking about praying for other people. It actually says in the first part of James chapter 5 that go to one another. In other words, get with your company. 
get with your company. When you look and you see the story of Moses, you see Aaron and her hang, holding up some hands and a sword on the field. Let's keep going here. So look at verse 18 here. So we, we talk about the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That was 17. Verse 18, it says, Now pray, make, get, 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 get your army involved, not just yourself. Pray in the Spirit. Isn't it interesting? Your, the Bible tells us that when we pray in the Spirit, we give thanks well. We pray uh, not unto men, but unto God. So when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying to God. So in this sense, it's like making communications on that phone to get to the A-10 warthogs in the air so that you, because it's, it's all around you. And when that gun came, it was just, it was awesome footage anyway. But it was just going to be a little long, so I didn't do it. And pray that in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and request. This is important for you and I to know that there's different kinds of prayer. Okay, we're not going to take time to look at those. With, with this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is huge. We, we don't think about this a lot of times. Did you know there's often times you sense gunfire and the direction it's coming from while somebody else is in the foxhole shooting the other way and somebody's taken on fire? They don't know they're taken on fire. They see the boom, 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 boom this way and you are in the foxhole next to them and you're seeing some other rounds, live rounds, okay, trying to take somebody out coming from another way. You, what are you going to do? Go, oh, there's guys are trying to shoot at them. Are you going to return fire? Because these are your brothers and sisters, and you're flying under the same banner. If you're hurt or they're hurt, all are hurt. So this matters. Are we returning fire? Because we need to be. We need to be returning fire for one another. But the problem is a lot of times we, we, we don't realize that, hey, if I, when I see things in my heart or when the Lord convicts me and says, lift that person up or go reach out to them and say, hey, how are you doing? And I don't do it. It's like somebody taking on fire and me going, well, I hope they have their helmet on. Oh, they won't get taken out because, you know, they are strong Christians until it slips through the armor. The shield of faith was down. I'm praying in the Spirit at all times, all kinds of prayer and requests with this in mind. With this in mind, be alert. Be alert. And by, you know, we always talk about being alert for ourselves. But what about our brothers? Keeping, uh, always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And then he said, also pray for me. And pray for, Paul said, also I need your prayer. I need your prayer. I need your supply. I need my army with me. I need heaven's aid and assistance. I need you to see what I don't see. I need your help. I need your supply. I, don't, I need your supply. Look at this. It, it, it's interesting. You put on your armor as a soldier, but, but don't fight alone, right? But look at this. Jesus, well, let me go here. Um, oh, let, let's go here real quick. Uh, Psalms 20, 5 through 7. If not 5 through 7, 5 and 7, just for time's sake. May we shout for joy over your victory, Lord, and lift up our banners in the name of our God. Here, Paul recognizes that his victory doesn't come in just from eking it out and stri striving. It comes from the Lord. That, that what the, again, he's very aware of the opposing forces are not on the ground. Okay, And he says, we shout for joy for our victory, and we lift up our banners in the name of the Lord. Verse 7, some are trusting in chariots, and some are trusting in horses, but we're trusting in the name of the Lord our God. Right, we're trusting in the name of the Lord. The, the name of the Lord is the solution. It's a God's solution to the, the problems that we're facing. Heaven's help. You need, to, you need a host. Seems like a whole host is against you. A whole host is for you. And a whole host is for you. Okay? Proverbs 21, 31. It says the horse is prepared for battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. Did you know it wasn't skill in that valley that day that won the battle? It wasn't Joshua's sword. And it was... It was quoted. It was written down. It was held in front of the whole congregation. Can you see Joshua bloodied and, and wore out and bruised and probably cut up and comes and, and they win the battle? And Moses says, hey, everybody, listen up. I want everybody to know Joshua didn't win this battle. The Lord did. 
Write it down, make it clear, because he's going to have to know this. Because on his best day, which he just had, it wasn't enough. And he needs to know on his worst day, he's not dependent upon him. He's dependent upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. we got to know this. It's not your best day that allows you to break through. It's him who allows you to break through. It's a host, and it's an army of who you and I are a part. Thank you, Jesus. This is better preaching than... Jesus needed prayer. Jesus said, hey guys, um, I'm going to go to the garden. So all the disciples go, go with him. And then he takes two of them into the garden. So all, look, look at this. Hang with me. Matthew 26, 36 to 45. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. All of the disciples are there. And he said to them, hey, you guys sit down here and pray. You guys go over there and pray. This is verse 36. He, he took Peter, and now he took Peter, to uh, the two sons of Zebedee, along with him. Took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. So there's three guys in the garden with him. All the rest of the disciples are over there sitting on the park bench. Okay, We're on the stone under those trees. But he goes on a little bit further with three more. Okay, So, verse 38. Then he said to them, my soul, I'm, man, I'm facing some stuff, guys. I'm like, I'm just, I'm in a battle. Where was his faith words? Where was his faith words? I'm in a battle. Hmm. He was in a fight. If you're in a fight and you don't acknowledge the fight, your teeth will be knocked out. You'll be some kind of bloody. Jesus was truth. He spoke the truth. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. What does that mean? Keep watch. Be alert. Or pray. Okay? Pray with me. Going on a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from from me, but yet not as I will, but as you will. Did you know a lot of times there's battles that you and I face that we just are fighting our own will? Like, the will to forgive somebody. Like, the, they don't know, like, I, but I want to do what you want. Can, will, you, will, you, will you pray? He didn't give them all the gory details to all of his disciples, but he said, will you, will you pray with me? Will you watch and will you stand alert? Will you pray? I'm going through a battle. I'm, I'm heavy right now. Like, this, I'm just facing adversity on all kinds of sides. Seeing financial adversity or this. Would you pray with me? Would you, would you stand with me? Would you be alert? Then he returned and found his disciples sleeping. Verse 40. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he even tells him to pray for himself. And we're not going to go through the the, the rest of the passage. They come back and and, and Jesus said, watch and pray. So we know that Jesus even said, I need my buddies to pray. It matters that you have some buddies to pray with. It matters that you have a peep, peeps on the, with, under the same flag. Okay? And I, I think it's, it's just amazing how Jesus, uh, he prayed, he prayed Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 32. So he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired or demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. This is, we're talking about what happened on the hill was this rod, God's rod of authority was lifted to the heavens. This is how they used to pray. This is why we lift up hands in church, not just to be a show of the people to your left and right and those behind you that you're uh, whatever. This is a prayer. Father, I magnify you. I, I, and I'm putting, I'm putting my, all of my hands, all that I could do on my own, all of my own, and I'm putting it on you today. I'm putting it on you this week. Father, I'm saying thank you, but I'm also magnifying you. I'm calling on Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. I'm calling on the one who is my healer. I'm calling on the one who is my victory. This is why we lift our, this is how they used to pray. Hey, in Middle Eastern religion, when they get down on their, on their knees, on their mat, you'll, you'll see them do this. Uh, they still have their hands up. If you're going to fold your hands, it's because you're going to not let anything to be done with these hands. You're depending upon the Lord. This is the, 
this is the ham, in a sense, cut off in half, and we don't know why. Because Mama's pan was so small. Like, there's a reason why we fold our hands to pray. There's a reason why we lift our hands, because this is how we bring things to ourselves. You need it. You want it. You go get it. You work for it. This is how you, you engage God in, in, the, in the prayer. Father, I lift up. Listen, for your kids at home, if you, if you got teenagers or young kids or, or family members or anyone that's heavy on your heart, Father, I lift them up to you today. What would that look like? Father, I just lift them up to you today. I give them to you. What am I doing? I'm doing like Moses did on the hill. Jesus did it for for Peter. Jesus asked his friends to come pray with him. It's important. Moses was, was showing you and me this story was written for our example so that we would know how to get to a God solution. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So, you got to know this. Attacks are going to come on the banner. Uh, everything was easier until I became a Christian. It's because you're wearing a flag. I was minding my own business. It seems like, it's just like, I, 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 you know what I want to be? I just want to be Swiss. Well, I am part Swiss. Pretty heavy Swiss. You know what Swiss, the Swiss were? They're not just known for chocolate and watches and knives. They're known for being neutral. Standing for nothing. That's what they're known for. Being neutral. Being in a place in the middle. If I side with one, I might be in trouble. But you know what? It, 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 the Bible tells us that if you're going to side with him... You will have trouble, but be of good cheer because all of heaven is on your side. Because of all, and you will overcome. Thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph and uses us to spread a fragrance everywhere of what it looks like to be a child of God because we're children of God and we carry the names of God and we can call out to Him at any time. But it's important that we know these things because these give us God's solutions when we face adversity. So, Lord of hosts, attacks are going to come on the banner. So, when there's an attack uh, on your brothers, what do you do? You lift your hands. You make some power available, James 5.16. You magnify the Lord with them. Yeah, that's what, they, you know, Moses' hands got tired. You know what he got? He had Aaron and her, and they put a rock underneath of them. You know, sometimes you need a friend to say, what were you believing God for? Okay, you were believing God for? Okay, great. Here, get that big rock. Sit down right here because we're not moving off of that. His friends got him the rock when he was ready to just be done. His arms were tired. His friends got him a rock and set it there and said, you sit here because we're not moving off of this. And here, let me hold up your hand. And you grab his other hand. And you think their arms got tired? Their arms get tired. You're holding them up all day. Let me tell you. Shoot, five minutes in worship. You, you know what I'm saying? Hold up the hands. Hold up the hands. So many times God appears small. And he's the solution in every moment. Levi, will you come? I I wanted to share um, what it looks like to stand and have God come through. And then uh, we're going to make a move. And then will you... Or give that to Levi. I wanted Levi to share um, 30, 40, year, whatever years of, of uh, yeah, of, of prayer and, and just God's faithfulness. And so many people, just like you said, had an impact on how he had an impact. Your dad had an impact on them. There was seeds. And go ahead. Yes, uh the testimony that I guess right now that I'm going to share, it can be in so many different ways, but the little backstory starting off, I got saved when I was six, so I'm 41, 35 years, and you have an encounter with Christ that changes your life, and you want that encounter with everybody that you come in contact with. Amen. 
So with that being said, my mom, she has known the Lord all of her life. My dad has not. And as a kid growing up, Daddy, why don't you go to church? Or come to church, Daddy. Well, son, well, son, well, son. Well, as you grow and your, your relationship with the Lord gets deeper and stronger, the burden that you see that you have for your loved ones, it increases because you want them to have what you have. So, all right, it's Easter. Everybody comes to church on Easter, right? If I'm not speaking. Well, son, well, son. Just being mom, going to church on Easter. So as time went on, I still stand in faith. I still have that banner of victory, of prayer, that we are going to see my father's salvation. So with all that, as time goes on, time increases. I continue to get rejected. No, son. No, son. You know, and you, you get discouraged because you don't see that victory. But, you know, the victory is the Lord's. Yeah. That victory is the Lord's. Yeah. So the past, past month um, has been the hardest and the greatest month of my life. So coming back from youth camp or church camp, actually, I was with the little ones. The burden for your father, for your loved one, but for my father especially, it grew. So I, I go to my father, I go to my dad to talk to him, to tell him God's love, that everything that he has, he doesn't have to carry. I seen the breakthrough. We seen the victory. Because that day, he said, I don't want this. He doesn't want the worry, the wait. 35 years, the Lord of Banner of Victory. We seen that. Mm-hmm. That, that evening, as Lakin was with me, and he just, his arm in the, hand, his, his arm in the air, and holding his hand, He surrendered his life to Jesus. 35 years. So I want to encourage you with this too. Stand firm in your faith for your loved ones. You will see the victory. You will get rejected because Christ says you will get rejected for my name's sake. But you know what? The victory is the Lord's. It's the Lord's. We see it. And guess what? Wednesday night was my first really time back here at church. And I was standing back over there sitting, and I was just praising God. And I was getting to worship with my dad for the first time in 35 years. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I want to just say that. Be encouraged that you will see what you're believing for. Stand firm. Stand firm. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And the whole time, just like he said, the Lord was waving that banner. The whole time, the Lord is, the Lord is, the Lord is, the whole time, he's waving that banner. And so what I had seen in my heart today uh, was I just saw, if you've been in a battle, Maybe more of a battle than what you even want to have given off, or but you just know you need some extra prayer support. I want you to stand right where you're at, and and we're gonna pray for you as a congregation. We're gonna whoever's next to you stand up. If you've been going through a battle, and maybe there's nobody here, but I think there's a bunch of people that have been going through a battle that need some extra prayer support. Your brothers and your sisters in the Lord that have been faced with just junk. Bad reports. Oh, look at who's coming. All this. And we're going to take, uh, take a moment here, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray over them. And we're going to pray, uh, and heaven's going to move on their behalf today. And we're going to stand up, and we're going to also be alert. So I want you to take a look at who's standing, because I also want you to remember and not fall asleep. 
So whoever is next to you right now, I want you to take a, take a look around close. Find somebody because if you're sitting down, I want you to take, get some eyes on them. And, and we're going to pray for them. And I want you to listen real quick to uh, Psalms chapter 20. This is David. He praying. I quoted Psalms 25 through 7. But as I was sitting down there this morning worshiping the Lord, the Lord instructed me to read this so you would know how to pray. Psalms 20, it says, The Lord is your answer in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from his sanctuary and sustain you from Zion. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably upon your burnt offerings or your tryings. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Shout for joy, or may we shout for joy at your victory and raise a banner in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your petitions. Now I know the Lord saves his anointed. He answers from his holy heaven with saving power of his right hand. Some are trusting in chariots. Some are trusting in horses. But we are trusting today in the name of the Lord our God. Horses collapse and fall, but we rise and we stand firm. Oh, save the king. Answer us. Oh, Lord, save the king or save these these people. Answer us on the day we call. This is what we're going to do. So let's just stand. And if you're close to somebody, I want you just to reach out your hands to them. If they're close, you can put your hand on them. Move towards your brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father. And we're going to take a, take a moment and we're going to pray and lift up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters to you. We 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 put on the armor of God, but Father, we stand as an army today. We stand as an army. Just whatever the Lord directs you to pray, uh, pray with them. Father, we thank you for victory. We thank you for a, a story of victory and the, 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 the celebration of victory over finances, the celebration of victory over relationships, the celebration of victory, Father. Uh, for direction, the celebration of victory concerning restoration, the celebration of victory. Father, thank you. We lift up today the banner, the one who's fighting for us. Father, thank you that you're fighting for our brothers and sisters. We're fighting with them. Father, thank you for aid and assistance, angels uh, going and, and ministering to these heirs of salvation. Father, thank you this morning, today in this day, in this day. Father, thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. And we just, right now, we put a stone underneath of, the, underneath of them to where they would stake that stand. And having done all the stand, they would stand there and, and, and receive what, uh, your victory, Father. Thank you for that. Thank you for victory. Thank you for clear minds. Uh, Father, thank you for the ones that didn't stand that are fighting uh, loved ones that just this is the way that it is. No, the Lord told you that you could have life until you're satisfied. With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. So you're not standing, but you've been fighting this fight. And you've been fighting it alone. So we're going to put you in remembrance of the King's Word. The Lord who flies over us with a word. That with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. And so we receive that, Father. We say that until we're satisfied. Until we're satisfied. Father, thank you for more than enough. Life, life, and more life. What do you got there? Thank you, Lord. There we go. I wanted to, um, you can just stay standing, okay, and stay in the spot that you're at because I heard this, that it says, the Lord, my banner, my victory. Do you know people who are victorious don't walk around somber Hallelujah. and depressed and oppressed? Shout with me. There is something Hallelujah. called a note of victory. Hallelujah. And you know, church, it's time that we walk around knowing what our banner is. 
And if you walk around knowing who you're flying, you're not walking around depressed because you know he's your victory. And there's a note of victory. And I was just listening to Brother Hagin. This is where we went to Bible school. And he, he had this prophecy, and I felt so strongly over a week ago to write it down on a Google Doc because I felt like it was supposed to be shared, and today's the day to share it. Because here's why. This, this verse talks about this. It says in Hebrews 13, 15, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. There is something, our sacrifice of praise, which is coming in, that's this. And it also talks about lifting up holy hands. That's this. That's the fruit of my lips magnifying my banner, magnifying his name and lifting up holy hands. That's my agreement of knowing who's my victory. Moses had to have his hands up all day. To do what? To say, he's my victory, the fruit of my lips. But I wanted to read this because I feel like this is for the people standing. And even those of you who may have been too embarrassed to stand. But this, it says, Brother Hagen prophesied this. Learn to lift your hands. And you know what? You know why he said we have to learn to lift our hands? Because we feel silly. I was on a walk when I was listening to this, and I was like, I need to lift my hands, and I thought, what if a car drives by, and I'm just out here walking, like, but you know what I thought? I don't care. I don't care how I look, because I have more faith in God, my victory, and sometimes we have to do something with our bodies. It doesn't just fall on us. What did did the Israelites have to do around the battle of Jericho? They had to march, and they had to shout. There's an action on our part. So we have to learn to lift our hands in our house, in our car, while we're out on a walk. Learn to lift your hands and praise the Lord. And the devil you will demolish and diminish. Put him to flight, for he cannot stand the praises of God's people. And God inhabits your praises, and his presence into manifestation will come. And you'll have great cause for rejoicing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. So I just saw that this morning. I want everyone in this room to lift your hands. And in faith, you begin to praise him. And some of you need to shout. Some of you haven't even shouted in a while. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise in this place. You are our victory. You are our victory. Some of you just need to say that. You are my victory. You are my victory. You are my strength. You are my joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we walk around with joy. And we walk around with a smile, giving you praise because you are our victory. Amen. You are our victory. Amen. You know, you can leave this place and those anxious thoughts will want to come back. Stuff will slap you in the face, but you know what? You have a God solution. You just heard it today. You have a God solution. That God solution is to lift up your hands and the fruit of your lips, giving him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank Thank you, Lord. Lord. And you know what? I loved Levi's testimony. He was able, after 35 years of standing, to be able to pray with his daddy to receive Jesus. And his daddy went home to be with the Lord just about a week ago. You talk about timing, but you know what is awesome about a testimony and why we wanted it shared? Because if he did it for them, he'll do it for you. If he did it for them, he'll do it for you. Amen. Some of you have been believing God for a while. If he did it for them, he'll do it for you. And what's that answer? Like Levi said, stand firm in faith. And you know how you strengthen yourself? Lift up holy hands and give him praise with a shout of victory. Can we give him one more shout? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ushers, if you'll grab the, uh, uh, we're going to receive communion as uh, today. This is covenant talk. Grab your, go back to your chairs. You can uh, stay standing, I guess. Well, I don't know if it's easier to stay standing while you pass it or not, but if you want to sit, you still have to stay standing. Um, No, sit down, because Landon's going to have to come up here.
Thank you, Lord. We're going to begin to pass out the communion here. Um, this is covenant. This is like blood covenant. All that I have for you. This is this exchange that you give all of who you are to him. This is why, what it looks like to give your life to Christ. That you say, Father, I, I, I lay my life down before you and I receive your life for mine. It's what it looks like to get born again, to know where you'd spend eternity. You give your life to Christ, and he gives all of his life to you. This is what, you can kind of come on up and begin passing it out. How many of you liked those better crackers last week? Thank you, Lord. Thanks, bud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to get quiet uh, while this is being passed out, and then I'm going to give an invitation uh, to receive Christ before we receive communion, if you haven't. But I just don't want to interrupt uh, this time and keep talking. I just want us to take a moment and just think about a body that was hung on a pole, and maybe you need to hang some things on a pole this morning. I want you to think about a blood that was shed for your and my sins. He paid the price where we couldn't for the next few minutes. Thank you, Lord.
just five minutes waiting on the Lord. Good practice. Just to wait. To pray and just to wait. Maybe 30, maybe an hour, maybe 30 years. But just practice and just I'm going to wait on the Lord because He's faithful to bring me an answer. He's faithful. This morning, if you're here and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, if you were to die today, you don't know where you'd spend eternity. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Christ where you'd know for sure as Jesus as your payment. If you're here today and you know you got to get right with the Lord, you've, there's sense in that, like, I want to give my life to Jesus this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand before we all stand, before we receive communion. If you got to give your life to Him, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you don't know where you'd spend eternity, but you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life this morning, I want you to stand. I don't see anyone standing, but uh, we're going to talk online. You can all be standing this morning to stand. You know, to, if you're here this morning and you, you want to give your life to Jesus, you have to make a stand. It doesn't just automatically happen. You have to make a decision with your will to give your life to Him. I'm not going to powder cake according to the Christ, you have to make a decision to leave me and serve him. Um, If you're online this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, I'll lead you in a prayer. And maybe if that's you this morning, you can meet me up here afterwards and just save your communion and have it with me afterwards, okay? But just pray this prayer after me. Just say, Father today I come surrendered to you my works my righteousness for yours I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins I believe that he died and you rose him again today I confess Jesus as my Lord as my Savior. Thank you for saving me. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took, he had dinner, the Last Supper. And he took some bread when they had gotten done eating. He said, this bread represents my body that was beaten for you. The Bible tells us that by his stripes we're healed. And so he said, take, eat, and proclaim the Lord's body, his healing. And this is what we were talking about this morning. You got to put something on that pole today. Put something on that pole. And we're looking today at the body. We're looking at the punishment put on Jesus for you and me. And so Father, we thank you for your your body that was given for this body here on this earth. A physical body, not just an eternal one day well-being, but Father, a physical body. Man, while in the flesh, took a payment for our body. And so we receive your body and we take and we eat in Jesus' name. Thank you. He said, that was a covenant I made with you. And I'm going to make another one with you with this blood. He said, this blood is the payment, a new agreement that I'm making to wash your sins, not just to cover them, to make you righteous, white as snow. Father, we thank you for the blood that redeemed us and brought us back with you. We take and we receive it and we say thank you. 
you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lanham. Thank you, Lord.